am no liar. And I told you last week that I was gonna teach you how to make that like sexy, zhuzhy, drapey, teddy bear skirt that I made in last week's video and uh, I'm gonna do it this week because I said I would. And so here I am doing it. I'm really happy that you're here for today's video. This is gonna be a super useful, simple skirt tutorial that you can replicate in any pattern for any season. It's gonna be money. If you are brand new to the channel, welcome. I'm so happy that you found me. My name is Orly, it's very nice to meet you. Uh, this is the DIY Designer. On this channel, I release a video every single week, every Sunday, and those videos are always DIY fashion, personal style development, and styling hacks. And really, I just wanna make sure that you are using your style to celebrate all of the wonderful things that make you you, and DIY is a perfect way to do that because it's custom to you. So today's video is actually kind of piggybacked off last week's. If you missed last week's, I'll put it in the link below. But I made this like sleeved, wrap scarfy situation. Now in the video, I mentioned that you're gonna end up with quite a bit of excess fabric that you can make something else with. I ended up making a skirt that I wasn't sure if it was gonna be cute, so I stupidly didn't film myself making it. And then when all was said and done, everyone was like, um, that skirt's amazing, what the, what? So I said I would make a dedicated one today. Now the reason I'm actually stoked that it worked out just the way it did is that I'm gonna make it in a totally different fabric with a totally different vibe. And so you're gonna see how versatile this pattern uh, really is. So I can't wait. All you're gonna need for this is about a yard and a half of fabric. You could go shorter if you want, you could go longer if you want, but that was kind of the sweet spot for me. And you're gonna need a little bit of elastic for our waistband. This is a sewing project, but it's pretty basic stuff. So if you've got even basic sewing skills, you're gonna be in really good hands. Um, okay, okay. Very excited, let's do it. So I'm gonna do like major spoiler and I'm just gonna show you what this amazing skirt looks like when it's just laying flat. Um, what? <laughs> you guys, it's just a rectangle with a hole in it. Uh, that is this skirt. This is why this is so easy and I'm very, very excited to show you how to do it. So this is what I think I'm gonna do for this version. I'm gonna do kind of a cool like layered tiered uh, plaid skirt. These are super expensive and everywhere for fall. So this is the perfect time to make it. Now I bought this fabric downtown. It is 100% cotton and it's reversible, which I thought was super fun. What we have to do is figure out where we want the hole. You can see the shape of this fabric is more square and larger than the cream fabric. If you wanna screenshot these dimensions, this is basically the dimensions that the two skirts end up being. The waistband in the plaid skirt is not gonna be centered. The waistband in the beige skirt was centered and you will see the difference in the effect. I'm cutting about a four inch strip of my fabric so that I can use it for a waistband later. And now I'm just figuring out where exactly I want the hole in my skirt to go. I know that I wanted it shorter in the front, which is why it's folded like that, shorter on one side. And so now I'm gonna fold it in half again and this is where I'm gonna cut my waistband. I am actually gonna go throw to my own video where I did a circle skirt because I explain how to do the math and the dimensions of creating a waistband that perfectly fits you. So here's the math. You're gonna measure your widest point if you wanna do what I did and not use a zipper. For me, that was 35. I divide it by seven. So you're gonna divide your widest point by seven and that is gonna give you your diameter. So again, mine was 35. I divide by seven and it gives me five inches. And now I plot down five inches. I do five and I make a marking, I do five and I make a marking, and then I will connect those lines. That five inch diameter will give me a 35 inch opening that I can add my elastic and slip my skirt onto. Now the funny thing is even though I knew I had that video, I didn't even take my own advice. <laughs> and I just sorta of went for it and cut it. And I didn't make it big enough. So my first cut was too small. So I folded it back in half again and cut it a little bit bigger. You'd always rather start small because you can always cut more. So if you need to err on the side of caution, but that math should do the trick. Now, here it is. It's a pretty cool effect. I love that I can wear it with the front straight across and have it long and kind of draped on the sides. I like that I can make the shorter part on the side, almost like a slit. Tons of versatility, works perfect with the plaid and I'm really feeling it. Now, for a moment, let's jump over to the second one. Since I had bought a second piece of fabric, also 100% cotton, I decided to make this one centered in all ways. So I'm gonna fold it in half center, I'm gonna fold it in half again center, and I'm gonna end up with a skirt that's more like midi length all the way around in a circle. I used the red plaid skirt as a guide to cut the same exact size waistband, and now it's time to actually do the waistband. And it's right around here when I realized like, shnikes, I forgot to cut my piece beforehand. And I really wanted this skirt to be symmetrical, so I decided to cut as small as I could to create a waistband, and now it's time to actually cut it to length. So what you wanna do is cut an extra piece of fabric, then measure the opening of your skirt. 
when you know the measurement, the opening of your skirt, you're gonna plot that measurement plus about a half an inch for seam allowance. For this skirt, however, I decided to just use black elastic. My thought was I would sew it and have it exposed. I thought like a black crisp elastic waistband would work with the style, it would complement it, it would look nice, clean finish all things would be good. So you're gonna wrap your elastic around your waistband to figure out what is a comfortable measurement. Once you have it, cut it to size and sew it closed. You wanna end up with a belt, like a, a closed round belt. Now you're gonna pin that belt to your skirt. And this is literally all that has to happen, like, and the project is done. So what you wanna do when you're adding elastic to a waistband like this is you wanna do, you wanna work in like four corners. So you're gonna do your front to the front of the skirt, your back to the back of the skirt, the right, and then the left, and then you're gonna evenly distribute everything else and pin it throughout. Make sure that it's nice and evenly distributed. That way when you stretch the elastic as you sew, everything is gonna sew in perfectly. You can see that my fabric and my elastic are lined up on the top. That's because you'll see when I'm done sewing, I'm gonna flip the waistband upside down. So you can see as I sew here, I'm pulling and stretching the elastic. When I let go, all of a sudden we get lots of pleats in the plaid fabric. When I pull straight, they go away. So make sure to pull on your elastic the entire time as you're sewing. All of the pleats are evenly distributed when the elastic sort of collapses back on itself. And here you go. You pop it and it's clean finish. Now the only bummer was that for some reason when I was sewing, it was like pulling up the fabric through the elastic on the backside. Do you see all that? Like, I don't even know why that happened. I kind of cut it and cleaned it, but I wasn't really sure what the deal was. Unfortunately, that probably means I won't be able to wear it inside out because it's like not super clean. I mean, I could cover it with a belt, but who knows? Then I did a little top stitch all the way around just to keep it nice and flat, prevent the elastic from flipping and kind of give it a nice crisp effect. Here's my debate. I made this side short, and if I wear it where I really want it on my waist, which is above my belly button, then this, it might be a little short. It might be fine because everything else is long. It's almost like a thigh-high slit that like, you wear your thigh-high slit higher than you would wear a skirt all the way around. However, because I didn't end up using this piece, which I cut for my waistband, I might actually be able to like, sew this piece back on basically. And that's 100% what I decided to do. And it ends up looking super cool and becoming like one of my favorite parts of this whole skirt. So what I decided to do was to like sandwich it, you know, like that blanket binding where it's like a piece of satin that's been folded on either end and then folded in half again. So it like sandwiches a blanket. <laughs> I decided to make that effect with this fabric. So I'm folding and ironing about a, you know, I don't know, whatever that is, half an inch maybe, I'm just eyeballing it. About a half an inch so that then when I fold it, it will be clean finished on the top, clean finished in the front, in the back, on the bottom, and I can basically just like, whoop, sandwich the edge of my skirt into that. Now the good thing too is that because I cut it off on this direction, like from this original side, the pattern lines up perfectly. So now what I'm doing is I'm pinning it, making sure to line up the pattern, make sure that the front and back are even, make sure that I'm sandwiching my skirt into the binding. Once it's all pinned, it's a 20 second straight stitch all the way down the side, super clean, gives it this like a beefy trim right in the front, tons of weight, tons of structure, it looks so cool. All you gotta do now is press it and cut off all of your threads and that one is done. Now, on to this waistband. I will tell you that this one is gonna seem more complicated because I'm actually gonna sew a fabric waistband that I'm then gonna feed the elastic into. So the way that we're gonna do that is take our waistband, which we've sewn together again in order to make a little circle, and you're gonna pin it directly to the skirt. Same thing, you're gonna do right sides together. So the right side of your waistband is gonna get pinned to the right side of your skirt. You're gonna pin the top of the skirt to the top of the waistband, and you're gonna stitch. From the outside, it's gonna be perfectly clean finish, and on the inside, you're gonna see all the guts. You are gonna fold it back onto itself. So if we think about this, we sewed the waistband to the skirt with let's say a quarter inch seam allowance. We're gonna take the raw edge of the waistband, fold it in half, and attach it back to that seam allowance. So right back into that quarter inch seam allowance, closing it into a casing. You're gonna pin it all the way around, again, right to its own seam allowance so that it's the same stitch. Now you can zigzag it to close it, you can overlock it to close it, however you wanna clean finish it, but whatever you do, make sure you leave about one inch open so you have a place to actually put your elastic. If you close it up, you're gonna have to seam rip open a little space so you can fit this little guy inside. So take your uh, safety pin, you know you, the deal, you kinda like slide, 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 and then pull it through the elastic. Slide, 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 pull it through. Once you get to the other end, just pull the elastic through and you're going to connect the two pieces together. Once you sew them together, it's time to close up the entire waistband. 
So what I like doing is like tugging on it. It will naturally distribute evenly all of the fabric if you do that. So just kind of yank on it. Once you know what is even, you're gonna do two things. Number one, you're gonna sew close that little one inch space because obviously that is still left open. Number two, I like stitching down my elastic because elastic like this in a waistband has a tendency to roll and twist on you, which is super annoying. So I like to go like every eight inches and just like two or three stitches, tack the elastic in place, move another eight inches, tack it in place so it's never gonna roll. Now, is it done? Yes. Is it cute? Yes. Am I obsessed? Not so much. And I just kept feeling like I don't need two of these skirts and I like the red one better. So I did a decision that I feel like half of you are gonna kill me for, but I chopped it. I decided to turn it into a mini circle skirt, like a little grungy skater skirt. I'm obsessed, but basically to do that, you're just gonna plot all of your points. I did 14 inches all the way around, except for the back third, I made 16. So the back is a little longer than the front. I pinned it and then I just cut it. I'm gonna wash it so the ends of this will fray so I don't need to worry about hemming it. I don't need to worry about perfectly clean lines. No big deal. The grungy effect of this is gonna lend to all of those raw edges anyway. Again, because I was feeling grunge, I was like, ooh, bleach. So I decided to bleach it in very like sporadic but intentional ways. I did like the hip of one side and then the hem of another. The hip of one side and the hem of the other. And then I decided to do the four corners of this. You can actually see where it was a little sun bleached, so I decided to lean into it. I am gonna go model these for you and show you how amazing these skirts are. The movement, the vibe. Hope that you enjoyed this one. If this was your first video, I hope I convinced you to subscribe. I've got really, really fun videos, always planned, tons of great content for you to really help expand your mind, your skill set, um, and the way you look at your own personal style. So I hope that you'll subscribe and kind of join the DIY fam. Okay, enjoy the fashion show. I'll see you guys next week. Mwah, I love you. Mm -hmm.